facilitate discussions, but really it's a strategizing meeting. So it would, you know, feel, please feel free to just jump in and, and, and say stuff. Um, so far, what we have for the, uh, for the agenda today is I wanted to share with you two Gender DC um, activities from last year that we did and we ag agreed upon. One is the gender report card that we started in 2011 and it was formally adopted in the re workshop reporting process in 2012 and we got out some of the findings from that and analyzed it and it would be good to just think through, have a look at the, the findings and see how useful this has been and whether, you know, think through how else we can improve this as a uh, monitoring process for, for gender and IG issues in IGF as well as possibly in other platforms. So that's one. And the other is the gender an IG roundtable that we decided we want to, wanted to do last year in Azerbaijan and that we did run this year and to, just to get a sense of how well that has gone, whether this is something that we again want to replicate next year and how do we want to do it um, differently um, so that it, you know, learning from, from this year. And thirdly, I guess, is to get a sense from you, um, how do you think, um, to, to what extent has, has uh, um, your own assessment of, of uh, the integration between gender and women's rights and internet governance in this year's IGF because it feels also a little bit different and how, do, how well, how, you know, what, what are your thoughts around it? Um, an assessment, I guess, and a discussion. Um, and I think there was also a, 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 a sort of like a post-gala party yesterday um, on women and IG, which is kind of cool. So it would be good if, like, um, if you were there, maybe Nigat, you can also tell us a little bit about that, what happened there, the discussions, if there was any ideas that emerged, um, it would be good to share. Um, and I guess that's kind of it from what I have in my head. And if there's anything else that you would like to talk about. Yes? No? Okay. I'm quite tired today, so I'm able to like, perform the okay. So from, um, if you are on your laptops, it's maybe easier if you actually search for it. Um, it's in genderit.org. Um, and if you go to genderit.org, at the front page, at the very top column on the right, there is an article that says, Results of Gender Report Card 2012. Um, and this is what I'm pulling on top. Some of the highlights we found out is that, so it's quite a lot, right? Basically, from it being in part of the formal re workshop reporting process means that every single workshop report has actually filled this in and indicated um, um, to what extent, you know, they thought that gender was integrated. And it's actually been very useful because um, when we tried to do it the year before, we did it on our own. We ran around and, and tried and fill in in terms of different workshops. And it was very hard to consolidate. So this one, we actually got like high numbers because it's part of the reporting process. If you don't report on your workshop, then it's very hard for you to actually want to reapply to organize a workshop for the subsequent years. So it actually sort of, you know, it, it is um, integrated into this whole like, reporting accountability planning process of IGF itself. So we got 89 workshops, uh, 89 workshop reports, as you can see. Um, and what we found is that in terms of numbers of participation, there isn't a huge disparity. Actually, there's quite fairly equal numbers of women and men in, who, are, who, are, who are participating at IGF. But this doesn't necessarily translate into A, um, speakers, um, B, content and substance of discussion. Um, and what does this mean in terms of trying to um, assess this much more difficult, soft, uh, much more complex area of, uh, of uh, integration of gender? So if you, so let's see now. And amongst all the different workshops, the, the, the thematic areas that has the most kind of like, uh, the ones that says yes, you know, there's definitely some extent where, um, where, um, where um, gender was included as a theme was around primarily on security, openness, and, and, uh, and uh, privacy. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, internet governance for development. Yep. And security, openness, and privacy each had one workshop in which no women participated. So this is just participation. Um, 
so if you look at the table number two, you can see that about half is the largest percentage in terms of like participation of women by theme. So it really like you know it's re it's really quite equal in that sense. Like the number of women and men who are interested in each of the different thematic areas. It's not such a huge huge disparity whereby only men are interested in one theme and women are interested in another. And you can see it as well. I think when when we when we go to like um, when we are in this uh, in the IGF spaces, we do see that there's quite a lot of. Uh, I don't know why he's saying it. Can you hear my heart beating? <laughs> okay, I'm making this worse actually, sorry. What's going on? Yeah, just like fitting in that thing. It's not really fitting. I don't know what I'm doing. Mashallah. I don't know. Okay. Okay, I can't see though now. Okay, okay. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, sorry. So, um, I think about half of about out of the ninety workshops, about half of the workshops indicated that gender was not a was not seen as a relevant thematic area to was not seen as relevant to the thematic area and therefore was not included in the workshop dis, uh, discussions. And we deliberately had this as a as a category in the gender report card because you know sometimes maybe it's not so evident and it's okay. It's not like everything needs to be that it needs to be rendered visible in that sense. And it's actually it's it's okay. But I guess when it's half, then we need to I guess think also look at this data and think about it. Like okay, what does that mean then in that sense? Is it about um, being able to uh, make the connections and the issues a lot clearer or or so on. No, I like that you have moustache on. Um, and if you go to... So this is, this is what you can see in, uh, in table three. So not related, which is um, it's the highest percentage basically, 55%. Not relevant is one. No answer is 20%. Mentioned is 19%, and in contrast, where it's seen as very, very important, where gender was the main theme, um, it's only 1%, which is basically 4 out of the 89 workshops. Um, out of all of the workshops, only 4 workshops said that, okay, you know, gender was actually absolutely critical, and we needed to center it and mention it. Um, ideally, what we would like to see is, um, is mentioned to be the biggest chunk of the percentage, where even if it's not the, the key issue, where you have to really discuss it, at least... Talk, you know, at least it was raised and it was mentioned because there's always actually some kind of a dimension. So ideally, you would, we would like to see that chunk of, um, of the stats to be a lot fatter. Um, discussion of gender by participation of women. I don't remember now what this question is about. Uh, oh, right, okay. Really? Oh, okay, okay. So the fourth table is whether, um, whether if there was more women, it means there will be a greater chance that um, gender would be discussed. And um, it's... Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm giving my ass. There you go now. Sorry, I cannot see you, so... So the fourth table is basically we're trying to see whether there's a relationship between actual participation on women and the discussion of gender, which is actually maybe a methodological problem for us as well because we are also conflating gender equals to women and women is, are the only people who raise gender. So there's something to really think about here, like why are we saying this question, no? And we really need to improve the way that we are thinking about this for the next year. 
Um, but but anyway, we 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 did we have this question. We analyzed it and we found that okay, it's true. Um, the one whereby gender was the main thematic area, almost all of the participants were women, um, and uh, and it will be interesting to see how this has shifted also um, this year. And maybe that also is a segue into our conversation around the IG roundtable and the different sessions that you've been where gender was discussed and whether you know it's true that women were the most participants. And if so, so what? And if not, so what? Um, and I guess that's kind of it. And for the fifth, we asked about um, we asked about recommendations on what how how workshop participants thought that gender could be improved, uh, how IGF could could really um, integrate um, gender more. And some of the rec some of the comments, um, actually, I have really haven't had a chance to look at it closely yet. Um, but it could be, but the most um, the most logical link seems to be around human rights. Um, and that where it wasn't raised, it was just seen to be like somehow, yeah, maybe there is a connection, but it's maybe not super related, and I'm not sure how to raise it. So that also is an indication for us that some capacity building is needed in terms of understanding what is gender and IG issues. So I will stop there, and um, if you have any comments or thoughts in terms of the gender report card, what do you think, what is this revealing to you? Um, it will be good. Well, just a small comment. I think um, when I went through the gender report uh, uh, form, there was there were no option for just saying no, like gender was not uh, expressed or what. It was no because it's not relevant. I think it's uh, already biased because uh, I guess that sometimes they don't raise gender issue because they, they, there's no one to talk about it or there's no one who ha is new and there's no one who have already uh, seek the gender perspective. And you also raise the fact that uh, even men can raise uh, gender issues, so it should not be related. And the more generally on the participation, I had the impression that uh, there were more women in the session related to what I call social affairs, like in the ch child protection, you'll see a lot of women when uh, in all the session around the uh, infrastructure or what, there will be no, no women at all and uh, very less participation. So I think we should also, beyond the fact of having a, a woman in the session and uh, raise a gender perspective to see also where women are a, uh, a lot and why, if it's still, uh, it's still in line with uh, the social and uh, <laughs> you know the technical, technical stuff are for men and uh, social and soft stuff are for women. We should also go as far as this. Internet governance. Um, any other comments or feedback? I think several things. M maybe for the next year, I, I, is one is to get the reports because you're assuming you. Yeah, I think we're we're probably hampered by the fact that we will have to wait for reports from all the workshops to come up before you we do a, you know, a report like a consolidated report. But if we could have that much earlier, then we might be influenced. We might be able to influence and give recommendations to the MAG to say, look, this is what the findings are. This is what you need. And then have, depending, right, three, four recommendations that say, in these areas, there are no women. In these areas, you know. So have very specific recommendations coming out of the report. But, but with enough time for, um, for the MAG to actually uh, address those recommendations, that's one. Number two, I think this is probably not enough to, to look at in a more qualitative, probably the in-depth way, how we want to move forward. I'm just thinking from the, again, from the results, if we're able to consolidate it, to see, let's say, maybe we could do interviews or surveys. This is going to next steps and suggestions, right? Um, in, with 
with maybe um, people who have um, done a lot and those who have not done anything. Just to give us a sense, you know, of finding out why, perhaps, and, and have much more, you know, uh, directly talking more with, with um, these stakeholders or these groups. Just two, two, uh, two ideas there. Thanks. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is Nina. Okay, um, I just wanted to call attention to the daily. There is an IGF daily that has a booth over there, and every morning I've been going over to read the articles. Um, even this morning, I've gone and I think that there is um, a fair representation of the gender panels, actually far more proportionately than what is in the overall um, IGF calendar itself. So I think I, I, must, I just wanted to, to highlight that, that the daily has done a good job representing gender issues. And this we need to put uh, maybe into perspective for the next years. Because we can't follow all the sessions, but at least they do a kind of summary. And I really find that interesting. And I want to say thank you to them for a good work. Um, I'm sorry, I was trying to do three things at once and my brain is not that clever. Um, one of the things I think about is the difference of the way women were participating and they themselves were seeing connections if they had participated in hosting a regional IGF. So in Latin America, we saw some amazing interventions from Colombian women who had hosted the previous regional IGF. So, um, and though there were many, many women at the Latin American regional IGF, we also struggled to make, it's, it's one thing to be present as women and we're not really that interested so much in, in counting heads, although it's a necessary sort of step. What really interests us are the issues and the interconnection of issues. And I do wonder as, at the very least, at the very least, <laughs> is it okay? It's not gonna explode. <laughs> we're, all worried, we're all worried about your tech. Um, <laughs> um, at the very least, when we're developing workshop proposals, uh, if there can be, just as their insistence on multi-stakeholderism, I, I don't think there should necessarily be an insistence on the sex of uh, or that gender of, I mean, that's one thing to insist on, but what could be some things that are suggested to them to help them to connect the dots as they develop the workshop proposal so that they're bringing in these ideas? Um, and, and I hate like gender checklists, I mean, in, in one sense, but they are useful for people who really have no idea of how to do it. If it's difficult for many of us to make um, the connections. Uh, so that's like, you know, at the regional and local levels, what could be some ideas as we're working in a multi-stakeholder multi -stakeholder process to help those multi-stakeholders bring gender issues on board and also here that goes beyond counting, uh, which I know we were trying to do, but it was much harder to get the other detail. It's easier to count. <laughs> but the other, other thing is I would really like to hear from people. There were other gender sessions here. Um, and so who was involved in those and how, how did those play out in terms of informing how other people are making connections? Because I haven't been at all of the sessions. So that was a question that I had. Um, we will talk about it when we are assessing kind of like broadly, you know, overall gender and IGF this year. How did it go in terms of all of the different discussions and workshops? Okay, those are really good ideas, actually. Thanks, Erica. Yeah. And please feel free to jump in. Like, I came in 15 minutes late, uh, apologies. Um, maybe now that I'm coming to think of it, we, we, can, uh, we can assess the gender report at the global IGF level, but the, the report that has been required of us here is not being required of regional IG forums. Okay, like I organize Africa IGF, I organize West Africa IGF, and I organize my national IGF. 
and I do not have any recollection of any gender um, approach to the reporting. Yes, the the secretariat, the IGF secretariat in Geneva requires us to support, to send in a report, but there is no gender notion to it. Now, it is true that there is a level of autonomy in the regional, sub-regional, and national IGFs, and we are not very sure if this could be done, but I'm just flagging it so we think through it. I know that in the national IGF there is no requirement whatsoever. We are being asked to say what we are the sessions or who participated. Basically, stakeholder kind of... There is a multi-stakeholder requirement in the report, but there is no gender-specific issue okay. that's attached to those reports at any other levels except for the global level. That's a really great idea. And I think we were talking about, like, you know, really, like, disentangling this whole notion of multi-stakeholders and just numbers, right? And how do we do this? So what I'm hearing from you is that there is a possibility of even having something like a capacity-building workshop at the next IGF or national and regional IGF organizers on how to run a gender report card in your planning or something like that. Yeah. This this guy's really works well. Yeah, he wakes your gender mind up when you dress like a guy. Okay. Now the thing is, at the national level, I think for those who came to the um, national and regional IG roundtable on day zero, I was pointing out that in my 12 years of WCS and IG related stuff, women are better organizers of IG forums. But that is not to say that the men are not doing better. But actually, um, at every point in time, you see that there's a whole lot of women around it. But that still does not give the gender coloration. But it might be good for us here in this session to actually do a gender mapping of IG activity itself. That is, who are the organizers? If you come to Africa and I tell you, were it not for the APC girls we would have been in trouble now. Yeah. So there's a whole lot of it going on, but it, it would be good to hear from other regions okay. who actually are the people. You know, there is the, the people who make the speech on opening ceremony, that's a different thing. But the people who do the organizing, who do the backlog work, we, need, we may need to do some kind of gender mapping around that. I'll, I'll be interested. And let me just end now by saying that I want to give a huge thank you to Judy Okite, who is not here. Some of you know her. She's also a person with disability, but she has been great in the Africa IG arena at all levels. She's not uh, available to be here, but Judy, if you're following, thank you very much. Thank you, Nena. Is there anyone else who organized regional IGF? So we have Erica with experience from the LAC IGF. Anyone else? Asia? Gayatri? Anya? Anyone who had a... I know, Anya, you were doing India IGF, and maybe you can share with us a little bit around that. But is there anyone else who did sort of like national and regional IGFs? Um, the report we did get, I didn't attend, but the re one of our members did. This was Bites for All. And the, re the report was that there was nothing on uh, nothing on gender or women's rights in the Asia IGF. The next one apparently is going to be in Hyderabad. So just to flag that, and that there was, and I think it was pointed out that the, in in a meeting that it should be. Thank you. I think uh, the Asia Pacific IGF in general, I find it a very male-dominated affair. I'm not saying there is no women involved, but I really find it. Maybe also because there's a lot of academia centrally involved. Civil society has a slightly different position so far. So maybe it's also the composition of the group. I don't know. But yes, next year in Hyderabad. So we have a good opportunity to change things. The India IGF didn't actually happen this year. Um, there were various meetings in Delhi last week. But none of those was actually an IGF. Um, as far as I know, there were also no sessions specifically looking at gender. I went to one meeting which was on cybersecurity, a two-day event, and in that one it really struck me how many people in the room were men and how many panels only had men, so it was still like at very basic levels even. There was no gender equality there. The women who were in the room were quite vocal though, so that was good. 
Um, so anyone else would like to share? Um, well, um, there was uh, Indonesia IGF for the first time ever in 2012. Um, fortunately, we're, uh, we're having space to talk about women's rights and internet rights uh, at Indonesia Internet Governance. Uh, and then wha what I want to say is also that um, there's mm -hmm. other coalition. There are this uh, human rights commissioner from, uh, from uh, several countries that I think uh, it's also interesting. We have like a meeting outside of IGF for dinner meeting, but I get uh, I got lots of lesson learned that um, the commissioners they have their own community and they have their own space actually to talk about internet and they have their own uh, role and position to bring uh, in different level besides uh, on the CSO levels mm -hmm. um, and they have a very good conversation that actually what they call that uh, they want to have high level uh, discussion among the commissioners to talk about internet rights, gender, uh, and women's rights. Um, and also, my lesson learned from this uh, IGF is how actually that, uh, for example, APC or Women's Rights Network or among the IGF monitor from the preparation from each IGF. Uh, for example, like we have, we are facing right now how Miss Internet Valley can happen and then uh, we, we didn't aware before. I mean, even like uh, there are local organizers, but uh, how we can integrate or how we can work from the very beginning of the preparation of IGF so that we can prevent something like Miss Internet not really feasible because it's like putting back our um, progress as women and internet rights. Any thoughts? <laughs> um, I feel and I think that we should move, uh, even keeping it in the Emily list, which is the gender card, you know, with the quotas, to having uh, someone that is our ambassadress. So to avoid it, to have someone that is a champion. You know, I'd I would like not to risk to have in the next IGF another miss. And the only way I think we can uh, uh, bypass the miss is that we look for women that make the difference. Women that make the difference in the local national uh, spaces because they took up uh, uh, internet policy issues and so they are the pioneers that represent gender and internet rights uh, in their own uh, realities or regional. And we think to make this champion visible so that we keep the Emily list and the quotas, but we starting demonstrating that we have the content. And the content is there, it's constantly there. Because so we will avoid the next uh, miss from somewhere and uh, going in this, uh, you know, black and white and, confront and confronting also always women between women. Because we don't want to diminish women. Yeah. But we need to, to bypass all this uh, matrix. To some extent, what you're saying, what I'm hearing you're saying is that we really need kind of cooperation with people like you, Kamil, who's very involved in the local uh, national IGF organizing from Indonesia IGF to this year's IGF to let us know because we wouldn't know no? what's happening, what's going on and what kind of support you can get, you need from the sort of gender dynamic coalition community to help like organize this if it's about talking to the secretariat or the MAC or whatever. Maybe that's one concrete way in which we can make this happen. Um, which then goes back to Valentina's point that we need to look for kind of like who are the gender and I, um, internet governance, I guess, advocates in the next, where's the next IGF? I forget. Where is it? The next IGF? Brazil. So, okay, so that's good. Yeah, you know, there's quite a vibrant kind of like um, feminist activist on working on internet rights issues that we can connect with and then sort of try to get them in the organizing um, support their, 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 their participation at the organizing level so that we can make sure this doesn't happen, I suppose. Yeah. Kaya okay, three. Any? Good morning. My name is Kaya three from the Southeast Asian Press Alliance. Um, I'm also looking for opportunities to raise the issue about media. And since uh, the gender coalition seems to have got a little bit more visibility, so maybe it's very strategic to raise the issue here. Um, I think one of the obvious missing points is really 
uh, a media strategy for IGF and people who are coming to the IGF. Uh, I think a lot of it is confined within very um, uh, limited groups. Um, and I think maybe this is something worth considering for uh, taking the level of uh, discussions or the uh, impact of you know, pushing for more gender uh, approaches um, is to also include media uh, representatives who are already um, who are already interested or who could uh, at least explore the issues a little bit more in the context of internet governance. Um, I think this is really critical because uh, otherwise it stays in the confines of the discussions uh, in, in these halls. Um, and I think that if we want to mainstream the issues of internet governance as well as uh, looking through the lens of gender, then without the media, I think it's really difficult. I mean, I'm very critical of the media myself. I come from that background. But I do think that it's, a, it's an investment that is really worthwhile. So if it's possible to think about future strategies that incorporate some kind of media presence and participation, and if you're thinking about the capacity building to include some media members as well, I think that would be a really uh, worthwhile investment. It also speaks to Nena's point about she checks out the daily IGF every day. I think you didn't come. Were you already here when she was talking about that? Yeah, that, so you heard that it's got quite a good coverage. So maybe I would also like to... Um, I would just like to just go back to the, to the report cut and close that discussion. Yeah? So where do we want to take this? Um, and who amongst us is actually interested to work on this further? So just to give you a bit of background on how it happened and, and what worked. Um, APC really lobbied through the mag. Um, and there was a champion within the MAG, the multi-stakeholder uh, multi advisory group, to really to uh, a gender champion within the multi advice. So the, your point about champions is well taken. Um, to really push this through and get the MAG to agree, actually this is a really good thing to include within the, the reporting process. So then it, it's, in, it's in the form on the IGF website, right? So it's included like a few questions within the form. But after that, what we thought would happen is that um, the, the data would be extracted as part of IGF's um, regular assessment of their own, you know, because IGF does this, they have like statistical breakdowns in terms of participation, who came from which region, etc. Um, but it wasn't, it was just kind of left there. And they thought that we would do it, and we thought that they would do it. And then in the end, it was very close to IGF and no one did anything. So we thought, okay, you know what, no, this is not good. Um, and at first I was a bit pissed off, I'm like, oh, come on, you know, you say it's formal and then it's not really. Then I thought, actually, it's, it's not okay to say that. Um, if I'm actually serious about this, um, and if we are committed to this issue, then we need to take it on. We need to take on the responsibility of pushing this and taking it where we want it to go. So then for this particular period, we just decided to get a, 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 a somebody to help us, a researcher to help us to pull out the data and to do some kind of analysis to figure out, okay, at least what can we see from this and where can it take us? And I was actually really surprised, um, very happily surprised, like, wow, it's, it's actually giving me quite um, you know, a good sense of like what's happening and, and where it's going. But obviously, there's still a lot of um, gaps and things that are not working, stuff that Francois raised and, and different people. So, is there anyone, else, anyone in this room who is very interested to further develop the gender report card as a, as a concrete activity and out, out, uh, concrete activity and strategy for the gender dynamic coalition, not just for the global IGF, but also to try and push it to be integrated into regional and national IGFs. Is that like is that any, maybe we can start like a working group on this? So. So, sir? Yeah, yeah, names, like people. People who love stats and forms and like, you know, research. Okay, I like it, okay. So, so I'm putting it down, okay. Michi, Francois, Valentina. Ada siapa-siapa teman di Indonesia yang suka riset eh? Cool. Okay, cool. So I will just close that for now. Suffice to say, we will look at this, fin finalize the findings, make it a bit more recommendations oriented, and then work on it for the for the next stage. Sorry, speaking Spanish. Hola.
Habla español. <laughs> okay. So, um, sí, muy mal. Poquito. I could really mess it up, no? I could talk rubbish, like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> I love it. Terima kasih dong. Jangan marah dong. Gosh. Okay, so from there, then there was discussions around trying to organize a media strategy. That is a really good idea. And Gaia, maybe this is something you, you, can want, you might want to coordinate in terms of thinking through a media strategy. I mean, with the coalition, you know, not, not to say that, la la la, I mean. I just want to make sure that we don't lose some of these ideas that are coming up before we move on to the next discussion area. Um, and then the third one is around mapping of people who are gender conscious. Uh, gen mapping of gender champions, I guess, within organizing processes for IGFs at global, regional, and national level. And this is something that Nenna is interested in pursuing. Um, and you were saying here, but maybe it's difficult to do it here unless you, unless, because we're kind of, we did a little bit of it. Um, but it's quite useful in terms of trying to figure out how to organize things, no? So, would, is this something you would like to take on? As a mentor, yes. As a mentor, okay. As a mentor, yes, to the measure of my availability. Okay. Okay. But let's, let's um, try and commit to this as well, like as many people as possible, to, because there's a lot of collective intelligence in this room that we can really... Um, and I think, Anya, if this is something you could also help be part of, that'd be great, because you're also very involved in terms of the organizing of IGN. Like Nena. Mentally, yes. Depending on capacity. So please, give them capacity. Okay. So um, I guess we can move on to the next topic which is just around how do you feel, like you know, an assessment of how do you think gender has been integrated into this year's IGF, in terms of the sessions that you've gone to, what are the interesting things that you've noted, in terms of either participation or thematic areas or conversations, um, and, and your, I guess just your overall sense of, of how things are like, um, beyond like sort of report cut kind of a scenario. I think the Indonesian uh, civil society group they did a great job. Whatever was uh, anything connected with the uh, rights, they had make sure that uh, gender, sexual rights, women's rights had been uh, uh, on the spot and in a very, very constructive way. It was just not an isolated voice. I, I, I find I met that I listen to very, very good uh, speakers, women speakers, but they were not uh, connecting the two issues. So they were experts in their field, but I didn't see you know, a connection. They didn't spell out uh, the, 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 the issue of gender, except uh, you know, more constantly when uh, we talk about civil society. Civil society did connect everywhere, but in the panels, when women were speaking, they were competent, but they were not uh, connecting the two issues most of the time. So I think that we have a lot uh, of work to do to, have the, the, to make the connection. Thanks, Valentina. Anyone else? Maybe from that side of the room, like the, the, the quiet, empty side? Maybe Betsy, you'd like to say something? Yeah? I'm Betsy Brayman. I'm with the U.S. Department of State, and I work on internet freedom and human rights programming, including gender integration in our work. And um, one thing I've been thinking about here is um, kind of along the lines of who are the champions uh, within governments on gender. Um, part of part of what I've observed is that I think um, when it comes to a lot of government priorities, people tend to choose things like surveillance or whatever over like a gender panel or something like this. And so what I'm 
trying to explore is, you know, more along the lines of what we've been discussing, how to integrate those things and not ghettoize um, gender in its own kind of separate category. Um, so, and, um, and I would be interested, I don't know, is there anyone here who, from governments in this room? So I think I might be the only one. <laughs> um, see, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> so um, anyway, I, uh, I would be interested to hear from you all who that you know within the different governments that you interact with are gender champions. And perhaps I can help catalyze something from that bucket from which I'm mostly interacting with. So please let me know. Thank you. Yeah, that's really useful. So we have now a sense like civil society are pretty active. Governments are kind of deprioritizing. I wonder if maybe Randy or somebody else might want to comment on private sector and if there's anyone from technical community who might want to talk about that as well. But first, I'm maybe to just to respond to the question, amongst what, what we know here, do you know if like which government has particular strong gender champions? For example, um, Kenya has traditionally had a very strong gender champion within the government. So is that... Sweden, but not in the press in general. But not on internet, right? but like you know, part of this kind of space, like an internet. Like Brazil, Brazil. I mean, you know exactly who. Maybe that will help. Like names. Beginning from the president herself. Still, yes, obviously. <laughs> Um, representatives from the government um, who, who is like quite a strong gender advocate who's also you know, active in these spaces. Like, do you know of anyone in particular then that we can also then network with and organize with and make sure that they are also at least part of this meeting, if nothing else? Because it's been very strongly civil society um, emphasized and that maybe is, you know, we need to make it a little bit more mixed in that sense. Governments are not active in this. So that's one part of the problem. There's only some governments are active in these spaces. But maybe not, not to risk... Sorry? Egypt. Egypt? Yes, please. Who? Uh, e not, uh, Nemin. Nemin. Um, I think the, the, the two Egyptian government representatives... Sorry, my two <laughs> Yeah, I want to say Egypt... Um, They've had women at that level for a long time. They hosted the first Africa IGF. And if my sight is clear from what I saw yesterday, uh, I saw two women officials from the Egyptian government who were here. Since I've not contacted them, I cannot give the identity here, but I've seen them here. Yeah, and they've been around and they can mentor other women in the field. Anyone from the Indian delegation? Mishi and Anya? <laughs> oh dear. Malaysia's not here, let me just put it clear, they're not here. Aku aja eh, jadi pemerintah boleh. Um South Africa, are they even here? Like your own governments, do you know? Like who's like a gender? If there's anyone from the government delegation that could potentially be part of a breakfast meeting hosted by Betsy at the next IGF, like, you know, with uh, maybe like, you know, three other people from the Gender Dynamic Coalition, from different stakeholders, to talk about what governments can do. Yeah, like, so far. I'm not as familiar with some of the processes, but I wonder, do you all offer any concrete, um, like, suggestions or resources for people who are organizing the panels about, um, I think you kind of, Erica kind of mentioned, like, a gender checklist type thing. Not necessarily that in particular, but something that could help folks who uh, don't have a gendered filter to think about um, some simple and thoughtful ways to think about gender within a more mainstream topic. Is, does something like that exist? We have a lot of articles that looks at different areas of it, but of course contained within APC's um, key uh, key 
strategies. So definitely not one that is overall cross-cutting across all of the thematic areas, but this could be one thing that we could do together, to write kind of like gender and internet governance primers um, on key issues. So like, you know, gender, and it, gender uh, I don't know, like on human rights, on cybersecurity, on access, on um, development. So maybe that's something that we can plan as part of our, part, our engagement for next year. That's a good idea. It's so good to have fellow gentlemen in the room. I've been giving the name of the Egyptian delegation, and it's 100% female. I think, I think I get a bit uncomfortable if we're just conflating this issue of women's representation with what we're trying to do, yeah? So if we want to work with governments, um, you know, someone from the U.S. State Department has to be careful, like, how they're positioning this, right? Because we don't only want women just for women. You know, who cares, right? The, having women in the room is just a tactic because if you're not on the table, then you're on the menu. It's not an objective for me. I don't care. If there's more women, as long as they're all, if they're all European or North American women, like what does that do for us? And and at this IGF, one of the main issues is like geographical representation, right? I mean, that's a bigger issue for me than women. Yes, we succeeded; we got half of the participants to be women, but we missed out on all the other things. So we can't say things like Egypt government has a, a full group of women and sort of be impressed by that and be like, wow when the Egypt government is the, one of the most repressive governments currently in the world, right? Or the US government is behind surveillance and things like the NSA and like blatant, blatant in your face sort of, you know, we're gonna see what you're doing and we have access to data, etc. But then we clap because they organize a round table on gender. We have to be very careful about these things. And maybe one of the things we want to do is look at gender as an intersectional space for all the other issues of oppression because we're talking about oppression we're not talking about you know just how many how many women there are versus men like that's really not what we want to be doing because we won't get anywhere actually we got somewhere at least we know okay it's equal but it's not rep it's not translating itself into actual substantive kind of like dissection which you just did so no that's a very critical thing and i think that also came out in terms of some of the conversations that happened on gender and the importance of intersectionality. So how do you recommend that this works? In terms of like, say for example, um, uh, uh, concretely, like how would we try and, um, you know, as the Gender Dynamic Coalition, if you wanted to turn gender into kind of like an intersectional platform to look at various forms of discrimination um, and issues, how would we do this as part of the Gender DC? Um, with you know, quite divergent kind of um, interests and, and not fall into that trope of like allowing ourselves just because there are women, then it sort of becomes like okay for all other kinds of like, this, like all other kinds of problematic uh, practices when it comes to the internet. Sorry? Private sector. Blue. Or... Yeah, maybe it, it's a tough question, but it's, it's, it's worth like, you know, just sort of freeing our minds and, and, and think through it a little bit. Shauna, Valentina, and, so, and someone else who hasn't spoken maybe, like, you know, someone at the back, anywhere? I'm Some. wondering if we can reach out to, I mean, I don't know if there's, for example, a dynamic coalition on people with disabilities, but reaching out to people with disabilities that are coming to the IGF and saying, how can we support your participation? How can we ensure um, that more people are coming and, and raising those issues within spaces that are being raised in terms of gender, in terms of sexuality, in terms of, um, like you said, in intersectionality and asking, how can we support um, your engagement in these spaces? So kind of like more active participation in other DCs, other dynamic coalitions. We did um, in the Internet Rights and Principles Charter one, so maybe that's a good way to also to try and think how that participation actually did help or not to integrate different kinds of issues. Um, and Valentina and then Caroline. And then I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll Um, um, 
I'm not sure how relevant this is because I'm completely new here, but it just crossed my mind that if we are talking about uh, some form of recognition or acknowledgement, the work has to be with some with a great substance. And the fact that many of the women uh, do not come to IGF, it doesn't mean they're not doing anything in their respective countries. I was fascinated with the idea of mapping the championship or something of that sort. And I think that could be a very small committee who could nominate women across the world. And I would go for women rather than governments because it's very com complicated as you, articul uh, you articulated it quite well and go and see from the grassroots level who is really doing great um, uh, work in terms of access, in terms of uh, women rights, in terms of a freedom of expression, and bring them in, because this is what you want to do. You don't want to keep it limited and exclusive to people who can afford coming here. You want to look around the world and see who is, whose ideas, whose work could be acknowledged by this sort of, of section. I, I, I'm sorry if I'm saying something no, that no, doesn't no, make no. much sense. I think that if we want to, as uh, Nadine said, to have uh, the gender as uh, an intersectional space, I think that we need to talk with the government and with the corporate se uh, sector techie. It's not about uh, are they good enough for us, but they are there. They have uh, work to do, especially in the government. Uh, it's a question of uh, having a conversation and a dialogue. And I think that sometimes talking with other women could be easier because I'm sure that their environment, they, they, they like their daughter, the gender uh, uh, make them a minority, so make them, them complying with the standards of being, uh, they suffer the same things that each and every woman suffers. So I don't think uh, that we should be, we should be aware of what governments do, and which is the politics of the, the governments, and then a public officer will never be completely free to be a person, except if, uh, you know, decide to not work anymore. And also corporate, each one has its own agenda, but this is not a good reason not to have the conversation and the dialogue. It will not be easy, but we need to have this conversation. Otherwise, we will never reach out to the, the real women of a day or to any possible policy. So I think that we need to, to be less confrontational in this regard. It will not be an easy dialogue, but has to be to take place. Uh, well, that brings that back to, um, um, to what was said earlier. I think it could be, and to just to add on Shauna, like I think it could be interesting also to have a champion, a youth champion, actually. So like from the young people coalition. Um, in that context, like I like, I've been to one of the panels. I thought they were quite enthusiastic <laughs> and dynamic, and I think it's it could be interesting also for us to think about who's going to follow us when we're going to be too old to be at the IGF. Yeah. <laughs> the same. <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm. Benjamin Barreto from the Philippines. I would still suggest as we map out champions in the civil society and in other sectors to really take a look at governments who are proactive and who really help in, in the gender issue, like Kenya, Brazil. And like in, in the Philippines, we have a Philippine Commission uh, for Women that we work directly with as, as we support um, advocacy to, uh, for, for women's rights and all these things. So uh, the reason simply is because government has resources and, and, and they can, if, if they're really willing to help in the gender rights and issues, why not? Uh, Brazil, Kenya, and, and like I said, to a certain extent, we have a commission and they, they provide support from time to time. So it, actually what you're saying reminds me of the Freedom Online Coalition of Governments who come together to look at freedom, on, 
freedom of expression issues on, on the internet policy. So maybe there, there's, there's no reason why there cannot be, say for example, a coalition of governments um, who are committed to multi-stakeholder processes to come together on advancing gender issues, for example, or even within these different kinds of coalitions to look at it. So that's maybe something to think through. Um, and Camille? Uh, I just discussed with Laila, because you know sometimes the a minister, they have a period for five years usually, and sometimes when we already build a network or conversation with her or him, and then after that, um, he or she no longer in that position. So and then like in National Commission of Women's Rights in Indonesia, it's also quite challenging for them to keep one issue with a commissioner and then that person is no longer there. So and then a new commissioner and then we have to build the network again and conversation again. So we have to see that also. Um, and then Leila suggests actually at the government level, uh, there are also staff uh, who are a civil servant and then they're staying there actually. So it means like not only the head or the minister, but also involve uh, the lower level of that ministry, ministry or commissioner. So because these people stay there as civil servant, uh, so they can uh, influence the new minister or the new commissioners. Okay, thank you. So champions will come and go, but the people who do the work stays usually. <laughs> Um, that's it. Just quickly, I completely agree with you on that point. <laughs> um, there's a lot of working level folks like myself that work very hard to put gender and other things on the agenda for our bosses. And those are the people that you really want to have engaged. Um, and they can get you the time and attention that's needed um, with those folks that are higher level. Um, I'll just note, too, that the Freedom Online Coalition is working to explore concretely how to do gender better, address gender, um, and they are working to create um, workshop processes that will have concrete civil society um, involvement, and one of those workshops will likely be on gender, so that's something to keep an eye out on for the future. And I can also let people know about that when it starts happening. Cool, thank you. Um, would anyone like to talk about what the yesterday's discussion, if anything came out from that? Nigat, was there anything that came out from yesterday's discussion? Or did you all just get drunk and roll around the beach? There was a kind of a, a, a dinner that was organized by a few people. It was on the Gender Dynamic Coalition list. The invitation was extended. Um, to just get together and, you know, since there are so many of us and we don't always have to sit in this room, we can just, like, have alcohol. No, uh, we just had fun and drinks. <laughs> no, but uh, I actually gave suggestion to integrate gender issues in the next Freedom Online Coalition, which is uh, uh, going to happen in Estonia in April. Sorry, the Freedom Online Coalition, yes. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we didn't discuss much it's just that we all women had fun after the gala dinner. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think this is really good. There's so many more people. I, I've been involved since Athens. You know, the first, <laughs> first. IGF, where there were like maybe five people, ten people, and less and less. So this, there seems to be so much more energy around the gender dynamic coalition, which is really great. What I see in so far in terms of just what we are looking at here and picking up from what it is as a gender dynamic coalition, what, what, what do we really want to achieve? And I think that needs to be maybe... Um, discussed more or articulated more because I think that was the issue or the problem earlier you know it's sort of like there's some vagueness around what it is and of course you know um, that doesn't mean that it's the only thing that will happen around advocacy on gender and women's rights in IGF because obviously all of us who are interested in it are going to do what we have to do right so but I see several things that are being talked about here so number one I think is the participation which it continues to be an and it's an issue in the sense that we still want to have diversity. And I think diversity can be defined in many different ways. 
um, in, in relation to not just having numbers, but having women, where do they, where, what kinds of um, people do we want to come to the IGF? So I think that's important because that's where you also find, you know, what kinds of issues come to the, to the, dis to the discussion. If it's only governments, then it's only those kinds of issues. If it's only, so, and, and that's where I think the discussion around who is relevant um, to bring youth, etc. So I think there needs, there needs to maybe have some discussion around that. That's, that's one. I think there's also the question around decision making. And that's where I see the suggestions coming from Nena, where we need to influence the, the decision making processes within IGF, I from national, etc., from national, regional, global. So I think that's one thread. And I think that's important. Decision making around how this whole process of internet governance happens. And we need to be there, and we need to identify where that is. And I think the third area is really the themes, you know? We need to influence the themes around IGF. And in, in what sense do we want to influence that? And I, that's where I think the areas around what, what are the issues that really are important to us. And perhaps when we look at, there's always similar themes around the IGF anyway, every year you'll be, you can actually, you can predict that. The overall theme they will fight about, they will argue about, and they'll come to some very vague theme. But in the end, you know, the issues you can always relate to. So it's important for us to identify what are the, critical, the most critical issues for the gender dynamic coalition. Maybe in terms of framework, maybe in terms of principles. And I had a fourth thing. It will come to me. The, the fourth thing is... Um, that's the, the, the third, right? I think the fourth is the media. And I want to relate to that, the publicness of the advocacy. And maybe that's where also there could be some discussion around that. What is it that we want to come out publicly, you know, to influence the public discourse in, in relation to gender rights, feminists within the process? Um. It's linked to exactly to what Chat said, and I really think we should go with that framing that Chat offered. But I, I think that I have heard countless initiatives of mapping of maybe it's internet rights. There's nuances, right? So in Latin America, there's a huge internet rights and internet actors mapping that's going on. I'm sure that's, that's being carried out by many different people involved in these areas. It probably has no gender component from the get-go, it might have a gender disaggregated data. We may not be able to influence that. You know, there are, but there are these initiatives that are happening. Being able to influence all of those different researches or know that that research is looking at gender and just try to follow up and get it back will be great for the next IGF. But it's not necessarily something that we all have a capacity of. So my feeling was there's so we could do a lot of mapping, we could do a lot of things, but we also have to be really realistic about our capabilities focusing on the goals. So when I think back to that, and I also think the same with all the other spaces. We cannot spend our lives in meetings, and many of us find that kind of frustrating and unproductive at times. So there, can, there are so many spaces where these issues are getting slightly addressed, and it takes a lot of energy because we are so few people working in these areas. I'm, for example, gender and broadband. Um, is another area. And, and the people who are moving that aren't necessarily here, <laughs> although it, it would be great. Or maybe they're here and we're not in their sessions. So just trying to understand that we have a vague idea or a very precise idea of different mapping, but how can we concentrate our energies? And going back to that, something that I think was fantastic was the Gender Roundtable. And what I liked about the Gender Roundtable is it positioned many themes as people were going through the IGF. It happened early on. And so how can we then get those things that were being mentioned in an excellent gender roundtable into people's minds, hearts, and thinking processes as they're in this space and beyond? So, I mean, that to me was, an, was good, was something that was done. For me, another bottom line that was also achieved at this IGF was the presence of local women's opinions around internet governance and making sure that voice was prominent. We're in their country. So, Yay! <laughs> I like that too. To me, these are like two bottom lines um, for for us at the very at the very minimal level. So, in to what Chat was saying about you know decision making themes, um, a public space for advocacy, and maybe supporting Indonesian women's voice to make that as public as possible. Um, at, and making sure also that when we leave, it's not a voice that was made public and vulnerable in each country that we go to. Those, to me, are the things that we can minimally do. Um, so 
keeping in line the minimum, going with Chad's frame. How can we move forward? Okay, thank you. Um, and I actually do want to end this conversation by really looking at what do we want to do as a dynamic coalition because bearing in mind it's a dynamic coalition that comes together once a year and not always the same people because different people go to different IGFs depending on where it's being held. So what can we do as a sort of remote dynamic coalition that a lot of our activities happen through say a mailing list that only gets quite active during workshop submission time and then there is a lull and then just before IGF, during IGF and then there's a lull again. So really what do we want to do as a dynamic coalition that is achievable, that is targeted, that has some form of impact? So that's why we started with the report card. This is something we did. And with the gender roundtable that Erica mentioned is also from last year's roundtable discussion. We said we wanted, uh, last year's gender DC meeting, we said we wanted to do this. So we organized it and made it happen. But what else, like, you know, is this minimum that we can do together? What else can we do and what do we want to do? Um, and also, I also want to mention on Erica's point on supporting local women's participation and perspective on, on, on advocacy and women's rights and internet governance. It's so different from Azerbaijan. Um, at the, the Gender Dynamic Coalition last year in, 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 uh, in Baku, there was a lot of Azeri women actually who came, but, but they were really not engaged. Um, they were not there throughout the entire period of time. Um, and even when they were, they were kind of playing hostess rather than actually participants of the space. So it's very, very, it's a marked difference in terms of levels of engagement, participation, raising of issues, and that's just been brilliant. Thank you. So what do we want to do? Come here. Uh, I just want to share um, what I saw from the last gender and internet governance uh, workshop. Uh, it's a lot of issues, yeah, and um, it's new for me. So I feel like um, I don't know if you guys have a regular meeting, just talk about or like specific meeting like IGF, but specific for gender, because gender itself is so huge issue and related to many issues. So um, it's not enough for one hour and a half like we had yesterday, uh, but. Uh, it was really great meeting because it was my first experience ever. So understand oh, the issue actually it's uh, several issues. So how we want to talk all that gender issues? Okay, my uh, my comment from Kenya. Gender, uh, I mean internet governance is still um, a white elephant if I was to use that term, because if you look at gender, we have a gender commission. Yes. But that gender commission, in terms of the um, relating with the women's rights groups, is really at a high level. And therefore, when we come to such a forum, you'll find that the, the internet governance is actually uh, is the women at that top level. It has not trickled down, and therefore we are saying the local women who form actually the real issues of women are yet to be discussed. And unless we find a forum whereby that local person, is, that local woman is actually represented in terms of an activity that can actually um, be looked at uh, like across, across continents. And therefore, we can actually say those women can actually come and represent a real gender issue that cuts across continents where women are actually, um, the issues of women are actually represented. Otherwise, we shall continue talking about uh, IGF and gender issues at this level, and the woman at that local level is really not represented. And let me give you an example of yesterday's meeting. I think we went to one of the, the, um, the workshops, and this lady was actually talking about her mother who is 80 years old. Her mother who is 80 years old is literate, I mean, is literate in terms of ICT. We are all growing at different levels, and diversity is such that we cannot discuss those issues at IGF at the same level because we are not growing at the same level. My mother at 80 years old doesn't know about IT, and therefore we are saying we have to look for issues that really cut across to be able to represent IGF uh, issues at um, this forum. Yeah, that's very important in terms of like the different realities that we bring to this space. But also to recognize that um, this is just one of the many spaces whereby, you know, internet and gender issues are discussed and, and, and that, um, we, and that um, what, what then, how then do we bring like this particular issue in terms of like, you know, literacy and access back to this space where the, where the policy discussion is being held. Um, we, we have somebody uh, that is participating remotely from 
tile and commenting. Um, I'll just read what that person writes. Um, I'm very new to IGF and found remote party participation very useful. Um, anyway, I would, uh, I would suggest that for the next IGF, more grassroots women activists or those who cannot afford coming to the meeting should be included more. Now I can only middle class women were here. <laughs> In Thailand, I'm sure that uh, middle class women and grassroots women have different challenges when talking about internet freedom. I would suggest that civil society organizations should encourage local women to remotely participate so that we can hear more of their voices in public. Thank you. Thank you. That's useful. So how to, how to mobilize more remote participation? Okay, we are almost at the end of our meeting. I'm just going to sum up some of the action points that we've decided on. Yeah? Um, we decided that, yes, we will continue the gender report card as a monitoring measure. We would like to see how this can be implemented at national and regional IGFs. There is a committee that's being set up to do this one. Um, the second thing that we decided was around um, trying to assess um, different IG spaces that's happening and who are the potential champions within that. So sharing of um, a mapping of this and in potential people that we can work with and engage with at different stakeholder levels, that's one. And then after we do engage with them, what do we want them to do, actually? What is it that we want to happen? I think sometimes we're good at organizing and then once we're there, we don't really know what our demands are uh, or what is it that we want to have a conversation around rather than demands. Um, and then... I forget lah. Crap. Um, and then there was another, um, there is another small committee that wants to talk about media strategy, right? And, um, and I really like the idea about facilitating more regular discussions on IG issues. I think that's actually quite a critical strategy. How do we do this? And how can we do this even if we're not at the meeting, you know? So from now until the next IGF, maybe this is something we can try and plan amongst ourselves. Who will take this up? What kinds of issues would you like to host the conversation around so that we can get a better sense of the multiple dimensions um, and that it's not stuck at women versus men? How many numbers in what room? Because that's not actually very helpful, as Nadine was also saying. Um, so that kind of stuff. And I liked um, Chad's framing of what is it that... I forgot now, where is it? Okay, okay. Um, so the four things, right? Um, in terms of what do we want to do as a dynamic coalition focusing around participation, what kinds of participation, decision-making, influencing processes within IGF, um, influencing the thematic areas around IGF and working with the media. So what do we want to do with all these three separate areas? Is there some, we don't really have time to talk through it now, um, but is there something you, you really want to talk about now before we end? Because we will never have this again, just to let you know. I mean, of course we will have this again, but in different ways, yeah? Not, not exactly the same people. So like, you know, you, this is an opportunity to really talk to exactly us now. What would you like to finally, finally talk about? And no one from APC, okay. <laughs> So, hello, my name is Andy. I'm from Erotics Indonesia. Uh, I would like to, to raise two main concerns uh, relating with gender issue here, but uh, the first one is about language barriers. This is very important for us. If you mention local women should be representing here, I, I say that I would like to highlight it that we have to have the translator or interpreter in each main, not only main station, but like this session because we are we are this forum is like one of our capacity building for example because for for example for our other colleagues in indonesia yes languages is one of our challenge in gender too so this is very important and i would like to raise this main issue and the second one is about the academicians i never heard about any academician who will involve more in the uh, IGF and including the gender issues. So, so how about if you mention about the involvement of the uh, government, how about the academician itself? Right, exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. So the, the issue of the language um, and accessibility as well as um, engaging with others, not forgetting other stakeholders like members in the academia and in the technical community.
Hi, my name is Randy. I come from a private sector, represent a few groups. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's, it's kind of a dilemma. It's kind of contradicting between human rights, women's rights, and businesses. But, uh, but this is where I am now. I don't know much about women's rights, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't know much about human rights. I'm very new to this. However, from a business perspective, private sector perspective, especially in Indonesia, um, where this country is about almost half and half, male and female. We believe that w if we develop uh, more and more, not necessarily injecting uh, women into the boardroom or injecting women into the parliament, because it's all just going to be about numbers. What we're asking is, what can they do once we, we you are sitting in that position? In Indonesia, I believe it, whether parliament, government, or uh, boardroom is about what? 11%, 12%, or 13%? women sitting in that, those chairs, uh, still one of the highest uh, around, around the countries. However, it's not enough. Uh, we're uh, we're starting, to, starting to do not a studies, but research within these groups of companies where we're looking into projects after project as why are women are more successful? Why are they projecting more, uh, not necessarily value, but more, more money? Mm. Now, remember, I come from a private sector. I come from business, so we're starting to question this. Uh, what happened to the... What happened to you guys? You know, what's wrong with you? You guys are screwing it up, to be honest with you. So why, how, how come they're producing more and more? Now, we're starting to raise this question. How can we develop them to produce more money for these companies? Okay. Uh, now, this is from a private sector's point of view. Okay. But uh, from a human rights point of view, from a women's rights point of view, and I agree with you, we all have to remember, especially in Indonesia, it cannot just be about the numbers. It can't, because you will battle a tough fight. Okay, so you gotta develop. You gotta develop. Maybe I misunderstood you, but uh, most of us, when it comes to human rights or women's rights, so may, maybe I'm wrong, but let's not let's make sure that it's not just about make sure what we're hearing is not just about having women into the boardroom. Make sure what we're hearing is how you know how can we develop them from the young age? How can we develop them before they get to that seat? Okay, and this is now remember this is coming from a private sector point of view. And I'm very, very new to this. Uh, so we are, we are studying this. We're looking into this. We're, we're looking how we can help as far as you know, women's rights and human rights. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, cool. So the role of private sector in helping some of these. I think by being here, maybe we can help to also reframe some of the understanding around how to think about the issues and our different roles in it. And I think this helps. Like, you know, just being part of this conversation and being here is already kind of like a beginning process. But where do we take it? from here onwards. I'm sorry, timing is a little bit short. We are almost at the end, so I just want to very quickly have like as many as possible and then close it. Okay. Ya, terima kasih. Nama saya Farida dari komunitas LGBT uh, di Makassar, Indonesia. Jadi yang pertama-tama saya ingin mengucapkan, uh, saya merasa sangat beruntung sekali bisa mengikuti IJ, uh, IGF ini uh, yang skala internasional, meskipun saya menjadi sangat terkendala di uh, masalah bahasa. Hello, my name is Farid. I'm from Gamacha, the uh, LGBT groups in Indonesia. I feel very lucky because I'm involved here, and but one of my uh, face what. One of my problems is that I really uh, have struggle in the language. Ya, meskipun saya menjadi bermasalah di bahasa, tapi saya sangat merasa sangat beruntung karena teman-teman saya selalu mensupport saya. Uh, dan ini uh, apa yang saya dapatkan di sini tentang tata kelola internet dan isu tentang gender akan saya bawa kembali ke organisasi dan akan membagikan informasi ini. Um, well, I feel so lucky also because uh, our other colleagues are uh, uh, helping me to translate uh, and to interpret the language itself. And I will bring all of the materials, information, knowledge here back to my home. Uh, yeah. Uh, masukan saya ya memang uh, akan menjadi sangat berbeda ketika misalnya yang dilibatkan itu adalah teman-teman uh, lokal yang men memang mem memiliki pengalaman atau menjadi korban uh, dalam pelecehan atau kekerasan atau uh, kekerasan didapatkan dalam media sosial karena akan berbeda ketika orang uh, korban yang menceritakan pengalamannya uh, dengan orang yang uh, orang yang tidak memiliki pengalaman uh, mendapatkan kekerasan. 
actually she said that uh, it will be very different when the local women or the victims who got the violence itself will be voiced their uh, what is experience uh, compared other people who do not have any experience on that. So they, she said that uh, w uh, a lot of uh, victims uh, got violence in the social media. Tapi kemudian yang menjadi masalah adalah untuk mendapatkan akses dan kesempatan untuk mengikuti kegiatan internasional seperti ini. Uh, seperti IGF ini. Dan kemudian ke, seperti yang tadi uh, saudari Ante katakan, Ante katakan bahwa capacity building menjadi masalah kemudian. Ya, terima kasih. Oke, okay. uh, one of uh, the struggle that we face that we, this is a kind of media like access and uh, a ch a chance like this is very rare for us and uh, this is a very good and important capacity building for us so it's very important to us too. Thank you. Okay, uh, I also just want to say that you say about champions uh, or focal point in every countries. So think about also the security of the local person. Because um, like LGBT, um, we discuss a lot how we want to say something about LGBT and internet and blockades and everything, and how is the impact, and how we protest about ABG as uh, one of big private sector association here, and then how is the impact, you know, and then think about also strategy about security for the local focal point. Thank you. So I think, um, I think we have quite a lot to move on from here. Thank you very much for your participation. So what we do usually is we have a gender dynamic coalition mailing list. This is where a lot of the during, before and after conversations happen beyond this space. If you're not on the mailing list and you would like to be, please come and give me your business card or, fill, or give me your email address and, I will, and we will add you to the list. The list is currently being run by APC. Um, and if there is anyone who is interested to be part of the core coordinating team of the Gender Dynamic Coalition because, you know, there is also opportunities to organize things more concretely within and if there's something you would like to do, then please also feel free to, 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 to say so. Any other final comments in terms of what we should be doing as a Dynamic Coalition? Uh, resources, that's what we need. Resources, and we, we want to know samples of success stories, champions, and data, all that. So, so that's really, really crucial, especially for us from the private sector. So sharing of, of, um, of success stories and, and data and so on to also help to be able to mobilize resources for participation, more participation and more capacity building. That's good. Um, any other final comments about what we should be doing as a coalition? Any other thoughts, questions, niggling things, Betsy? And now APC can speak. <laughs> Your silence has been people. Um, just really quickly, I want to mention that um, the U.S. government does support a lot of local activists to come to the IGF every year. Um, and I think that there could be more... Um, peer pressure from folks from this coalition to their governments to help remind them of uh, their responsibility to help incorporate those voices and also you know we do help do our own peer pressure within the government types to try to make sure that happens as well but that is definitely a huge priority for us so to insert pressure where necessary to support local participation very practical oh. and picking up from some of the suggestions. One is, I'm not sure if, if the IGF orientation that's new, the eight to nine meeting, if that was, if that's, there's any intervention there that we could make use of around, you know, these are the gender issues we're looking at. Sort of part of like the briefing for delegates, yeah, or for the representatives. So that's one, very practical. And number two, in relation, I think this is a question coming from Camille earlier, because it's very short, the, the round table, no? Which is, but that's, that's, we need, we still need that, I think, because then you have everyone together. But there are pre-events as well, so another way, and I know there's tons of pre-events, pre but if it's, that is one thing to think about too, if you want like a one-day pre-event, just so we can deepen discussions around agenda, you know, day before. Um. 
Um, I'm also not sure what people who are participating here think about the World Summit on the Information Society, <laughs> our, our grandmother, uh, and, um, <laughs> and how you will be participating there, but it's certainly a space for, for deepening the aspects of debate on gender and internet governance issues. So I, we should be thinking towards that as well. So if there's nothing else, I guess we will call the meeting to an end. Thank you very much again for your participation. Don't forget to please pass me email addresses and so on so we can continue this actually after today. Thank you.